you know, you go off, you do your MBA, you study, you know, basically areas of business that are quite unique. You come back to your home country and decide that besides consulting, you want to create a business. And I remember you telling me one time that one of the big reasons for starting a business rather than remain in consulting is that you wanted to show proof that being a business whose core was sustainability was actually viable. Yes. So when did your hard when hard did your time. focus move from being consulting to being full time uh, in the business that you run now? Well, uh, still, Eco Mensajeria give consultancy to some businesses, but now we do it based on on the experience. And as you said, at that moment. The idea was not to tell businesses that you can be sustainable because I made an MBA in sustainability. It was too, too basic, right? So the, the, there were two options. I, I had the chance to keep myself as one of the first professionals in my country uh, prepared in sustainability and you know spend my time giving them the right directions to make the right strategies to develop their sustainable businesses. But I wanted to make it from the experience. And I knew that it was going to be hard because it will take me the time, years, part of my life to validate to myself that it was true that you can develop a business with a social purpose, with a positive environmental impact and being profitable. That, that was a very huge theory in that time. So Eco Mensajería was this first uh, idea that gave us the chance. And I'm being honest. If you ask me at that moment, I will tell you, no, Robert, you know, I'm developing this, you know, startup just to have a showcase that maybe in a year I can prove to the country that, that you can be profitable with sustainable ideas. Well, <laughs> 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. A decade ago, we start with the idea. And we have learned that as any other business, it's not easy. It, it requires a lot of effort, a lot of energy, a lot of passion, a lot of sacrifice. No matter if it's sustainable or not, yes. But something that I have learned, of course, of course, and something that I have learned is that when you put a purpose in your business idea that goes beyond money, you have additional resources in terms of passion, dedication, energy to to never give up because you have another reasons to make it successful. It's not only money. And to be honest with you, it gets a time where you forget about the money. You are just developing this purpose. And what moved you is to increase the amount of CO2 that we can develop, that we can lower and avoid. And what moved you is to make new interviews to knew these people that in the face of each one, I see my father. And I'm just thinking, how sons do you have? Well, I have three daughters. Those guys have a lot of sons. I don't know how they do it. But, you know, the less, the lower they are, the most number of kids they have. And in each one of them, I know that maybe there is a, an engineer waiting for his father to have this formal job. A doctor waiting for his father to have a formal job as I live when I was expecting my father to bring the money to home to pay me the university. So I'm giving back the opportunity that I had, but not only to one as my father had, but today is more than 200 families that depends of Eco Mensajería. And I think that it's a great strategy to have these purposes behind the business ideas that goes beyond money because those resources are, go are going to give you the energy to stand up 
10 times per every time you, you fell. And do you know, it's great to have do you that. know, Edison, Edison, one of the things that I, I often tell people is of all of the entrepreneurs that I've spoken to, only a handful of them say that, that what was driving them was money. You know, most, most entrepreneurs are, are like you. I mean, part of it is self-actualization. Part of it is wanting to feel like they stand for something greater. We have one life to live. And the beauty of business, I mean, this is one of the things that kind of drives me a bit crazy, is that business gets such a bad rap in the media. And the fact is the majority of businesses, the vast majority are small businesses, right? So these small businesses employ us. So the potential, the power of what you can do as an entrepreneur through a business like the one you've created is, is immense. As you say, 200 families rely on the work that you do, the leadership you provide around this business idea. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing. And I think that's what I find so uplifting about entrepreneurship. So when did you know, what was the first big breakthrough that you had? Like what was the, the most significant um, occurrence where you went, ah, this is gonna work? You know, I, I think I think it was uh, where we met, Robert, the, the cheapest venture. You know, um, in 2015, Forbes magazines uh, put us in the ranking of four business promises, okay? And, and that was something, like, interesting because I only had two messengers at that time and was validating the business idea. And Forbes magazines came and say, you know what? You are one of our 30, just 30, business for promises in our Forbes ranking. And I said, you know, looks like there's something interesting here. But then we got the chance to be selected by Chivas Regal Venture, this great experience where we met in Oxford University. Um, and, and to be there with 26 people from 26 countries to have the chance to be evaluated by people like you, for example, to receive this positive feedback uh, just told me that it's not only in Dominican Republic. I'm getting a validation from a global perspective. So I feel that if I dedicate my time, my resources to this business idea, I will end validating nationwide in my country, but then I will be ready to expand this globally. Because in Oxford, people like you told me that you like the idea and you give us great feedback. And then we were in the United States with these CEOs from these big companies telling us how great our business idea was and giving us tips to, 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 to grow. And I remember being in in in, in London, and this uh, Sir Ken William received me. Uh, he was like this big, great advisor in climate change and environment in London, uh, and and that man cried with me when I explained him what I was doing and what what I wanted to do, where I came from. And he was crying and he said, you know what? For people like you is the reason we, we keep doing this every day. So I came back to this half of an island, Dominican Republic in the Caribbean, a developing country with all these global validations. And that was like, you know what? I have the evidence that it's worth to keep doing this. I already have it with the purpose of the business, but Coming from Europe in the United States, having this validation was was something that, of course, it will take time. But I'm sure that with the time, we will be bringing Eco Mensajeria business model to Europe and to United States uh, to to take advantage of that early validation that we have uh, with this experience. So 2016 with this global competition that choose us as the best social entrepreneurship in Dominican Republic and having this validation from these experts in Europe and in the United States was like the biggest uh, validation and breakthrough to, to keep going with the business idea. 
So 2016 is only five years ago, and you were saying that in 2016 you had two riders, and now you've got 200 riders. So yeah. what was it that triggered that major growth in your business? Crisis. <laughs> Crisis, I have to tell you. And, uh, and I think the pandemic helped us a lot. Because yes, we kept growing in 2017. We have like like 18 messengers, like from two to 18. It was very interesting. In 2018, I found this investor that uh, valuates a commensageria in 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 three million dollars. Imagine imagine this, Robert. I, I'm the guy who is coming from the the grocery store in the garage of his house. And now one of the business in 2018 was uh, the valuation was validated at three million dollars. That was something very great for me, and and that validates me that that I was able to create value without compromising the social and environmental impact of the business. So then in 2018 he passed away. And that was very hard because the investment that we assured and the and the valuation that we had, uh, we didn't have got the chance to to make it true because of his death. So then 2019, I was stuck in a legal situation because of his death, waiting for them to decide the successors of his business. And in 2020, at the beginning of 2020, finally. I got the chance to to buy back the 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 company the percentage that he had so I got again the 100% of Eco Mensajería and I was like this is the moment less growth and the covid-19 and the pandemic just arrived at that moment so imagine that last year in 2020 from 46 maybe messengers that we had at the beginning uh we got we have to to stay paying them their money without the business giving any service so paying the payroll without giving any services because the government says that all businesses have to close so if all business close what kind of service can we offer as messengers but i decide that in the crisis was the best time to teach and to show our people that we were there for them. So we kept paying without producing any money. And it was a moment where the the money left in the in the bank was uh for two reasons or to pay the next the next payroll or to give them all their uh money and to close the company. And in the middle of that crisis, what happens was that I was thinking this very popular phrase in entrepreneurship that says that crises are the mother of innovation. And also another one that says that entrepreneurs are the ones who makes problems into opportunities. The ones who are able to transform problems into opportunities. So I said, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm going to make this problem an opportunity. And I start to read again the, the government resolution about uh, how business have to close and everything. And I found these last lines at the end of the document that says, all business have to close except health sector, health um, and food sector and uh, gasoline or petrol sectors like transportation, food, and medicine. And I said, well, this is the solution. Let's refocus our business services to these type of sectors that the government allow them to keep working. So we start to reach the health sector, the food sector, and the uh, petrol sector. And... Today, our biggest clients are the top businesses of each sector. 
in pharmacies, we have Farmacias Carol. That is the biggest company here in, in Dominican Republic in the pharmacy sector. They have more than 113 uh, uh, stores, and they have more than 400 eco mensajeros that now we are working to transform them into eco mensajeros. That client represents more than 400 new jobs that we have to create in the next year. But also we start to work with Pizza Hut. And today we are the delivery uh, for, for Pizza Hut in a part of their stores and we are growing with them nationwide. But also in the supermarket, in the food sector, we are working with the two biggest uh, supermarkets of the country, serving them as mensajeros. And, and today the, 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 the growth of the company, it's four times. Fifth, uh, five times uh, faster and that maybe 10 months ago or in the middle of the crisis that was in the 2020 with the pandemic. So I believe that the crisis gave us the chance to learn that we can uh, take advantage of them and we can be positive, focus, as you said, and try to find the opportunities inside the problems and that can give you the opportunity to grow beyond what the normal business model uh, will take you. I think that we have grown and with the contracts that we have, uh, we are supposed to hire at least 600 new eco mensajeros and eco mensajeras in the next two years. So it's a, it's a great experience to, to keep the positive mentality in the middle of the crisis so we can transform problem into opportunities. My last question is this. When you were in university doing your MBA, did you ever imagine that this would be the place you'd be, you know, a little over 10 years later? In the university? Mm. E Something for sure is that I was going to be making my own business. Because the last thing I did in the university, you know what it was? <laughs> I visited the, we call him the el rector, like, I don't know how to say it in English, like the, the top in the university, how, how, what, what is he, the, the dean, name? The dean. Yeah, the dean. So I knocked the door of the dean and his secretary was like, hey, what are you doing, guy? You can knock that door. Who are you? I'm, I'm just here because he said the dean office and I want to talk to him. And he was there. He opened the doors and the secretary says, excuse us. He doesn't have any uh, appointment. And he said, and what do you want? And I said, well, I want to talk to you because, you know, I'm just graduating and I have something that I want to tell you. And I make a copy of these ideas that I would like to share with you. And he says, of, of course, get in. And the secretary was like red, you know, she was mad at me. And I talked to the dean and he said, why do you want to talk to me? And I said, you know what? I'm just finishing the business administration career and uh, nobody talks to me about entrepreneurship. And you said in the graduation of my brother last year that you didn't want the graduates to be receiving the diploma and taking a walk, finding a job in the streets with the resume on their, their, their hand. So if we didn't teach the professionals that the only thing they have when they graduate is not only to find a job, but to create a jobs, we are not gonna change that. So I'm proposing you here to create this new subject called entrepreneurship with this and this and this and this. And my friend Robert, two years later, he called me and he said, Edison, your subject was uh, accepted. And now the university has entrepreneurship as a new subject. And for sure that showed me that sooner or later, I was going to be around entrepreneurship. Uh, what I didn't know at that time is that I was going to mix purpose with entrepreneurship and but at the end that was the the result so today sustainable entrepreneurship is oh but look at this 
Um, when I finished in 2010, the MBA in sustainability and corporate social responsibility, I came back to this university that is like the best one in the country. And I asked them to create this new subject that I also create for them called sustainability and corporate social responsibility. They say not. But five years later, in 2015, they called me and told me, you know what? We want that subject that you mentioned five years ago to be created. But there's a, 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 a request. You have to be the teacher. And I say, well, it's okay. But you know what, Robert? At that moment in 2015, I was the owner or the entrepreneurship of sustainable entrepreneurship, the firm. But the proposition of entrepreneurship was in 2006. And the proposition of sustainable and, uh, sustainability and corporate social responsibility was in 2010. In the first one, I was just a, a, a professional without job. And in the second one, I was an employee. But when they called me to accept the subjects and to ask me to be the teacher, I already was the owner of sustainable entrepreneurship. So I think life was there, mission was there, purpose was there. It was just a matter of time. Well, listen, Edison, it is always a huge pleasure to talk to you. I think your energy is infectious. You know, I love the fact that you took a tough upbringing and you channeled that into making the world a better place for your business. So I just want to say a huge thank you um, for what you're doing and for taking the time for this interview. Thanks very much. It's my pleasure, Robert, and uh, thank you, you, for uh, being created in these spaces to share uh, these experiences. Uh, and I'm just, I just want to, to let the people know that everybody has something special inside that we have, we really have unique talents that God gave us. And if we mix that talent with our uh, career, maybe we can be ending creating unique things as we are unique ser human beings and, and, and invite them to, to know that to put a purpose that goes beyond money doesn't mean that you are not going to be profitable. It's the opposite. Maybe you will end being more profitable than just being a guy looking for money. So thank you, you Robert. Well, thanks, Edison. I appreciate it. Thanks for staying to the end. I hope you enjoyed meeting the remarkable Edison Santos. As always, if you liked what you saw here, please hit like and subscribe for more empowering stories from people like Edison. And once again, a huge shout out to the Innovation Hub at Carleton University, an organization dedicated to creating a new generation of leaders. Visit them at www.carleton.ca slash innovation hub. Till next time.